just shove it up? Yeah, just shove it up like that and then spray it in. Just like that. It'll be fine. Look at this. Who'd have thunk? You'd, you'd get a lesson in tractoring and cat care all in one video. This is like... We do it all here. That's why we call it Everything Elliot. So there's my Kubota L4701. And there is a Kubota B8200. This was dropped off at my house to be uh, taken care of, I guess you could say. It's leaking just about every fluid. It looks like it's been leaking hydraulic fluid out of this cylinder since about Vietnam. Basically, I'm gonna be going through this. I'll probably make a bunch of different videos on it. And today, it needs to be cleaned before I'm even going to attempt to work on it. So we're gonna pull this thing outside and get it power washed. So I'm gonna go get the power washer out. I'm gonna power wash this thing and then I'll go over with you everything that we're gonna be doing in the future with this tractor. So now that it's cleaned off, let's get you a little view of it. Basically, it needs three cylinders rebuilt. This cylinder, this cylinder, and the lifting cylinder on that side over there. All three of them leak. Pretty bad, actually. And if you saw the dirt and grease in there. On this side, this needs a wheel seal right here. You can see kind of the oil that's coming out of there. So I assume this diff up front has probably no oil left in it. Other than that, it just needs fluids, um, nothing that really jumped out at me, just the quick look when it was dropped off last night. I have to figure out how to get these cylinders apart because they are not a normal cylinder. They don't have a head on here to take off that you unscrew. It's some sort of like, I don't know, something you got to do in there, like a, like a snap ring. That's what it is, a snap ring. So I can figure out how to get that snap ring out and we should be able to rebuild them no problem. Other than that, it runs pretty good. It chooches a little black smoke. I don't know what we're gonna do in this video. Just power wash it. Maybe start taking the cylinders off. I don't know where we left off. It's been a couple days since I've uh, recorded this. I've already got all three of the ones that are leaking off the machine. It's really easy. There's just a cotter pin here. You pound this pin out and of course you gotta take your lines off. So I've already got two out of the three disassembled right there and here's the third one now these are a little different than your normal hydraulic cylinder normally these have a cap on them that you just put them either a spanner wrench or a monkey wrench on twist the cap off and out it comes however this design has a little c-clip that's in here kind of like a snap ring except it doesn't accept snap ring pliers so i'm going to show you how to take this thing apart in case you guys uh have a BF300 loader and need to rebuild the cylinders. First things first is you gotta clean all that schmutz out of there.
Now I need to clean this little channel out that's right here. There's a little channel. You want to make sure that is nice and clean. So I'm just using a pick tool and making sure that's all cleaned out. So in here between this collar and the actual housing, there's a C-clip. You need to find the opening. Mine happens to be right here. You can just put your pick tool and go around, you'll feel it drop down. So if you just put your pick tool here, go around slowly and see how it dropped down there. See how it's up and then it's down. That is your C-clip. That is the end of your C-clip and that is what we need to get out. So it is raining outside. You guys are probably hearing that on the roof and it's probably, probably sounds terrible, but you're gonna have to deal with it because what the heck? My hands are sweaty, like a doctor. Like I was saying, you're gonna have to deal with the rain because uh, this is when I'm doing it. It's a rainy day outside, so I can't do anything outside. All right, first things first, you wanna pull this up a little bit, get it out of your way. You are gonna lose some hydraulic fluid out of the bottom, so make sure you have a uh, rag or something underneath. Take yourself a punch, you're gonna put it on that collar. And I usually just keep my fingers in between the punch and the cylinder, that way you don't damage your cylinder. Give it a couple good wraps. Do it on each side. And you should see that whole collar should move down, exposing that C-ring. Okay. So my C-ring is exposed now. Um, I'll try to get you a little view of that. My hands are a little dirty, but... So if you look right there, that little thing right there, that's your C-ring. That is what you need to get out. And it's tough to see, but there's that, uh, the opening I was telling you about. So basically what we need to do is just get that out however we can. Usually I have some uh, good luck pounding a pick behind it, so that's what I'm gonna try. Take your pick and just... Get it in there, pound it underneath. There you go. And you just work it around. That's what you want to get out right there. That's that little opening I was telling you about. That's what you're going to pound your pick in between. So. Imagining this was still in, you just take your pick, put it right behind it, just like that, and then hit it with the hammer. That'll start getting it out. So the next part is going to be messy. We're going to pull the piston out of the cylinder, and to do that, we're going to put it on its side. And like I said, it is going to be messy, so we'll take our rag, we're going to put it over our ports. That way, any fluid that comes out of there is just going to be stopped by the rag and absorbed by the rag. So find yourself something that fits into this pin location. Wood probably works best, but this is what I have on hand. You're going to want to get a running start at this. So you push it in and just pull it out. Oh, didn't get fast enough that time. Here we go again. Now I find that this might take a couple times, especially if these are old and they're a little corroded. That's probably shaking the camera to high heavens. See if I can get my lovely assistant to help me after she's done putting the <laughs> Will you fleeing, fleeing tick mat on the cat. Really... Just gotta, just gotta, just get it in there. Yeah, but like, that's not what you're supposed to do. I don't do it like that with a dog. Yeah, you just shove it up. You just shove it up? Yeah, just shove it up like that and then spray it in. Just like that, it'll be fine. Look at this. Who to thunk? You'd, you'd get a lesson in tractoring and cat care all in one video. This is like, we do it all here. That's why we call it Everything Elliot. It's a flea medicine. It's got a flea med on. All right, great. Lovely assistant, can you uh, assist me? Give her the business, all right? There we go. Just like that. Out she comes, you're going to have a little bit of spillage. So make sure you got a rag to catch it. Okay, set this up here with the other ones. 
And that's how they come apart, just like that. So next thing I'm gonna do is I gotta order some parts for it. Uh, I need a new seal kit and everything like that. I just wanted to make sure I could get them all apart before I order the parts for them. So I gotta order some parts and uh, then we'll be back to fixing. So here's where we stand. The cylinders are still out of the tractor. They're still sitting over there, but I'm waiting on parts. I ordered them from Messix. And if you remember from the beginning of this video, it needs a front wheel seal. Problem is it's not on this wheel, it's on the opposite wheel. Not a lot of room to work over there. So I wanna get this thing turned around facing the other way, that way I can work out in the open area down here and such. Problem is, since there's no cylinders in the bucket, I can't move it without dragging the bucket everywhere. My intention, I've got that chain there. I want to lift the bucket up and then I'm gonna chain this front piece of the loader to the support. And I'll keep it six, eight inches up above the ground. That way I can move the tractor around if I need to and the tension will just be on the chain. So what I'm planning on doing is pulling my Kubota in here getting the forks underneath the bucket and lifting the bucket up. That way I can chain it. I don't know how well it's gonna go. I don't know if, if it's gonna work, but we're gonna find out. I think I got it figured out. The chain is going to run around this cross member outside this bracket and it holds it up off the ground. The problem is the bucket tilts because this side of the hoses is open. So now I have to lift the bucket up and I'm probably just going to press this bolt here, wrap around this and chain it back to itself. We'll see if that works. Again, it only needs to get the tractor turned around. It's not like it's a permanent thing. off the ground I'm gonna get my tractor out of here and we'll get this thing spun around pretty pretty much disabled because the wheel is going to be out of it but I got to get that wheel off there to figure out what seal is leaking so I got this side jacked up this is the one with the bad seal again you can see all the oil there that is not supposed to wobble that indicates this has bad bearings in it so I guess while we're uh, tearing the seal apart we're gonna have to pull the bearings out so I'm gonna get this all apart and we'll see what it looks like inside there should be a bearing in here to this piece right here. It seems really strange to me that there's not a bearing there. It looks like what it's designed for. Huh. 
Why would there not be a bearing there? I mean, this thing is just chewed off though. You can see the top of this. The top of this is that bright silver. The whole thing is rounded over. That's super chewed up. So I'm gonna have to look up some sort of schematics, like a parts diagram or something, because I feel like there should be a bearing here. And since there's not when we're removing it, I can't be 100% certain that a bearing does belong there. It just makes sense in my head that a bearing should be there, given the forces that are on this thing. I don't know if the bearing just went bad and the previous owner just said, hey, I don't wanna spend the time and we're selling it, so let's screw over the next guy. Probably what happened. Looks like we've got a seal up here with the bearing that's inside of here that is shot. So that bearing's gonna need to come out. This seal needs to be replaced. Um, so we're gonna take this all up on the bench and uh, we're gonna take this apart, see if there's a bearing in here, which, I don't know. I still think there should be a bearing on this surface. I'm gonna look up a parts, uh, Look up a parts diagram real quick and see if I can just find something real quick that that says there should be a bearing there. So I'm consulting the service manual on this tractor that was provided with the tractor from the owner. Uh, right here is the piece that we're looking at. Right there is where I said a bearing should be. And if you look in that picture, there is a bearing in there. So that means the previous owner of this tractor took everything apart, took the time to take the bearing out, and then just not replace it and just put it back together without a bearing in it. That is embarrassing. And if it was a mechanic that did that, they should be fired. There definitely should be a bearing here. I'm gonna bring that stuff up onto the bench and we'll see if we can get that ring gear off and see what the bearing looks like that's underneath there. I assume there's another bearing underneath there. I mean, there has to be. So snap ring we gotta get out. Now this ring gear should, should come off of here. I don't know what it's gonna take to get it off. Oh, there we go. So inside of here, there's these split shims. You wanna take those out and then it should just come apart. This bearing that's here, well, it's inside here. This thing is whooped. There's a lot of play in it. So like I suspected, there is a bearing here that is spanked. The bearing that should be, when this is back together, that should be here, or rather here, is missing. So we gotta get some bearings, we gotta get some seals. So there's the main seal. So there's one of the bad bearings. Now, being that the way that I am, the other side is not leaking, but seeing that we're missing bearings in this, I mean, I can't, I can't not take the other side apart. I'm gonna to have to take the other side apart to find out if that side is also missing bearings and probably rebuild that. Now, this is that is going to be the customer's decision. I will not make that for him, but if he tells me he wants it taken care of the right way, that's what we're gonna do. Being that the tractor is in my shop now and he doesn't have the ability to work on it, 
I assume he's probably going to tell me to fix whatever needs to be fixed because saves him from bringing it out here a second time in like six months. So we got everything tore apart that needs tearing apart. Now I need to order parts. I've already ordered the parts for the hydraulic cylinders, but I don't have the bearings and seals because I wanted to see what I needed before I ordered them. I just didn't want to order everything. If it was mine, I would, but it's not mine. So that's going to be it. We're done tearing this thing apart. I'm as far into it as I need to be. In the next video on this tractor, we'll be putting everything back together. I'll show you how to rebuild the cylinders. I'll show you how to rebuild the bearings and seals. Not rebuild, just replace them. So make sure you subscribe, stick around, and watch the next video coming out soon.